C, let's, let's call C of D L. So, Ronnie, that's, that's Nishioka proved that, is that right? No, no. So, Nishioka, do you remember Nishioka proved independence of the Pendeva equation? First Pendeva equation? Yeah. And he used some calculations. So, he doesn't make you some more thick. And so, this lemma, what? Oh. you could adapt his techniques, oh, that's the right? Lemma. That's the conclusion of the lemma. Oh, you're proving, yeah. I'm that proving that if. Yeah. That it's in there. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and then if y is in, to use, if y is in f, so f is c of t, y1, ouch, then you can think of y as living in uh, the Puissieu series at about, a, think of it, the Puissieu series. Uh, is algebraically closed if when f alg when when you fix when you take base field f alg and so you can think of y2 as living in the, this piece of series and then it involves some uh, uh, calculations to get to to sort of be able to say that you can't actually uh, this can't actually happen so it's more it's it's very very much computational in some ways so uh, I won't say much here maybe if we Meet later on, I could say a little bit more. All right, and, and so you, you get rid of, of the, the, so basically here you would have a ram ramification of exponent and you, you show that this can't, that you can't have a positive ramification exponent at each beta. And so it forces you to be already uh, already defined. So, I mean, it, it's, this is very vague, but uh, just to say um, that this works. And note that uh, I've had sort of used this technique before uh, for P2, non-generic P2. And it seems like there's something very general happening. Uh, and I've been trying to pinpoint this sort of generality. All right. So that's the first one. And just on the order of magnitude, these computations, how many pages and how many brilliant insights? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's that's the one thing. of each, um, ten of each. It's not no. It's it's a it's a very easy calculation. I have it here. So let's see. It's two pages, one one and a half two pages calculation computation. Okay. So it's not. And how many brilliant insights? Uh, I mean, at least one since you have a name of a person there. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. So there's his. He has a brain. Inside. But oh, by the way, the the city reducibility here uh -huh. is plays an important role. So there's sort of okay. there's something going on uh, that could be maybe used more generally. And as I said, uh -huh. um, I could maybe say a few words about that. that. Okay. Anyway, and so now um, once you have that, then. Uh, if you remembered, you don't have to, my talk last time, we are pretty much in the same sort of situation, right? Uh, you have that, uh, so, proof of prop one. So, let's say they, it's threatened in degrees one, so it will be algebraic, meaning that it'll be uh, definable over interdefinable over city of that, right? So from lemma, if uh, let's say if uh, y is in city y one, ouch! You have that there is f. Uh, a polynomial in the parameters in CT alg such that what did I say? Uh, not polynomial. <laughs> 
this is then, sorry, y2 equals f over g of oh, okay. y1. That's what I was. Where f and g are over polynomials over c of the uh, So this is sort of what, I've, what I meant. And, but now, use, and so, by the way, I, I've used this trick that you start with things that are inter-algebraic here, uh, but indeed you can, only, you can already prove it with this one. And so now we look at the linear equation Right, and so what you have is both solutions are written as uh, uh, if you fix two two let's say two CT alg even independent algebraically independent solution. Right, so you can pick them in such a way that. Y2 is, Y1 is, uh, so U1 plus gamma 1 is U2, U1 uh, plus gamma 1 is U2, and you can do the same with Y2. So each one can be written as uh, rational functions, um, u1 prime, u2 prime. And now sort of look at the relationship that y1, y2, and y1 has to be, uh, let me write it down. <laughs> it's easier. And get you get the u one prime plus u two gamma two u two prime over u one prime plus gamma two u two equals let's let's call the entire rational function p although that should be And so you chose you chose your uh, you chose your solution such that u one u prime u one prime u two prime are algebraically independent, and then you can do some degree computation to show that uh, there should be a dependency between the u one u two u two, right? So it gives that. Which is sort of a contradiction, right? So somehow the overall outline of what you are doing is you start with the strongly minimal transcendence degree two equation of the basics, mm -hmm. and then you specialize it to a. Um, Ricotti equation, so, uh, which fixes one of the transcendence degrees to stupidity and leaves the other transcendence degree. Mm -hmm. And then you cover that guy by someone of transcendence degree 2, but linear. Mm -hmm. And then you drag your, rela your algebraic relations, relations yeah, all the way, exactly. All the way up to yeah, there yeah. and get your contribution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I'm going to finish by saying that um, in a minute. But no, the only, the only thing um, that one needs to add is you have only Riccardi subvariety at, let's say, one point. Mm -hmm. The others aren't Riccardi, but they're interdefinable at each step with uh, the Riccardi variety. Right. So that's what I'm going to write it down. So not note that if 
says, uh, define CT definable by ejection between a set um, X and Rick A, B, C, where A, B, C, CT are CT reducible and so on and so forth, then a prop one holds for X as well. Right, so if you take two solutions of I, and so that's what sort of we'll, oh, we'll do it for, right? Because you can't, you can't sort of, starting from a Penderby, I'm, I'm gonna write this down in a minute, you can't start with a Penderby equation and go straight to a Riccardi, right? But you can go to a, something that uh, has a definable by injection with a Riccardi, right? And that will, will do it, right? All right. So since you're going to specialize the pen -Bay equation, how are you going to carry the assumption that the coefficients of the pen -Bay equation are algebraically dependent? So let's, let's go about seeing how we finish the proof now. So, uh, so three is proof of conjecture, right? Right, so two things you, some of you might worry about is the, the, the statement of a conjecture, remember it says if you take for any n, you take n distinct solution, then they are algebraically independent, right? So here we've been sort of focusing on two solution, right, pairs. But that's because the, um, we knew already that the generic Penderby equations are geometrically trivial, right? So that plays a role. So it's sort of everything comes together <laughs> to be able to get that. Everything sort of meshes together. So let's say some facts about S6, I'll write it down, so alpha node, alpha 1, alpha 3, and alpha 4. I know that alpha 2, again, is related once you fix, uh, once you fix those four parameters. So the first one is um, if alpha node is in 2z, then S6 alpha is not strongly minimal. Right? And indeed, uh, there for the alpha node happen to Z. So there is an order one. Let's call it R alpha node hat uh, of so S six uh, yeah, alpha node hat alpha one, alpha three, alpha four. All right, so there is, let's say, a unique order one subvariety, right? So remember, if, if you remember, if you remember, 
are zero is a Riccardi variety. So that we talked about before. So you put y equals t and alpha naught equals zero there. And if you remember, we wrote down the Riccardi uh, variety early on. So rig zero is a Riccardi variety. And all the others, and so a plus is CTU irreducible, right? So I said that earlier as well. And this is true then uh, as well. So all our node is in definable projection with our node. And so for all y1, y2 in our alpha node, you have at the transcendence degree over C of T of y1, y2 equals 2. So this is just because it will hold a very Riccardi one and so it will hold of this one. So note that one has to be uh, sort of careful because here we're working with a system, right? And so when we say Riccardi variety, we have, uh, for example, the Riccardi variety. Remember, it was y prime equals 1, and then x prime equals the Riccardi expression. Mm -hmm. One just has to be careful, but so everything follows for in terms of transcendence degree and so on and so forth, right? And so that's one of the ingredients. So now we've, we've, so we've got that this holds of all the, all the, all the ones of variety uh, that are sort of a specialization of the parameter alpha zero to, to z, right? And so now we want to try, to, what we want to try to do is uh, use genericity of parameter to move alpha node to, to, to z, right? But first, we have to recall that the second one Second fact is uh, take so for take alpha node alpha one alpha three alpha four uh, algebraically independent over q right uh, then you have an s six alpha this alpha is geometrically trivial. Which means, uh, I'll do so to, I'll say it this way, there's a definition, but let's just say it this way. To prove the conjecture for PS6, uh, one only need to show that if Y1, Y2 is in then transcendence degree of of a C of T. Let me let me push it a bit <coughs> even further because of triviality. So Q alpha T of uh, Y1 Y2 over Q alpha T is 4. This thing. Okay. So I'm going to say. 
So geometric triviality says that if you have n elements for any n that are dependent, then already there must be a pair that we can dependent. So if you show that any two pair is independent, you've shown that any n tuple of distinct solution will uh, be better. So by the way, I think let's not violate notation too much because y is a system. So So we only need to show that. And so, by the way, instead of C of T now, I'm also, I've also changed C of T to uh, Q alpha uh, T, right? And that's, again, geometric triviality uh, tells you you're, non -orthogonal, you're orthogonal to the constant. So if you are able to prove it for that, you are able to also prove it for C of T, right? So there's a lot of, that's uh, quite sort of strong uh, property as well. All right, and so that's what remains to be shown. And so we're sort of ready to give a sketch of what Alice uh, just said in words <laughs> a few minutes ago. Right, so. So, so the proof of conjecture for six, generic F six. Well, say suppose y one, y two in S six alpha. These are generic. Uh, these are distinct. And suppose you have that y2 is in um, q, let me say, let me call q alpha t for a moment. Uh, let's call it c0. Well, yeah, that's fine. Is it not essentially a little k from previous stories? A little k? Like when you were defining k reducible? Well, um, here, sort of, we were talking about c of t all the okay. time. So okay. here, as okay. I said, geometric reality, all we okay. have to do okay. is prove there. Okay. And indeed, let me, let me call this one c0. So c0 t uh, y1 ouch. Right, and to say that for all uh, y one, there exist y two. Yeah, for all y one, there exists y two, such that y one, uh, y two is algebraic over uh, C0t. Uh, y1? Uh, y1, thank you. Oh, sorry. I meant uh, y2 is algebraic over yes. C0t with y1. Exactly. Ron, do you mean four there? Yeah, I do. So, with two generators? So, so remember that. Uh, it's a, it's sort of a system, so yeah. But that isn't that the rational function field generated by y one and y two over yes, the of y yeah. one. So, yeah. yeah, each of y one, y two. So let, let's for for it's going to be the same thing. So let's oh, okay. uh, let's just do that so that uh, there's no confusion. No, then y prime to the same. Each of y one and y two is a pair. pair. Oh, yeah, oh, right. It's not a single. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the, the usual oh. mole theory uh, take yeah. on tuples. <laughs> <laughs> then I brought that up because that would have been crazy. So, so it's a vector. It's yeah. a pair. Why one is a solution to that system? 
and Y2 oh, is a solution to that system. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. We yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's fine. We yeah. can just we can still look at the field differential okay, field. Sorry. Yeah. So saying sort of that um, uh, for all y1, there exists y2 such that um, over is, uh, let me just say, let me do that first. So, and um, let me change that for variables. To say that there is this u solution such that u is algebraic over CTY1 is a C0t formula that's true of y1. I'm going to nitpick. Yeah, that's right. And say that you mean not just randomly algebraic, but algebraic in the particular fashion in which the thing up top happened. Right, in general. Yeah, exactly, to say, exactly, so, uh, in, in the way above. <laughs> Thank you, Alice, yeah. Uh, just because I've run out of time, I yeah, can't yeah. write all the details, but yes, to right. say that there is a U, so Y2 is some, somehow that U, that is algebraic over Y1 in, in the uh, witness, let's say, by the polynomial or there, is a first order statement over C0t. And remember, it's true of y1, which is a solution. It's going to be true of all over solutions. So you can then say for all uh, v, there exists u. And for v solution, there exists u solution such that uh, v, uh, such that u is in C0t of u alg. As above. This is first order expressible. Um, and the fact that you sort of specify that C0t, it's going to be expressible as a sen with a formula that's going to say something about alpha node, alpha 1, alpha 3, alpha 4, and t. Right? That's, that's why, for example, we work over C0. Uh, it allows us to uh, say that it's a first order statement um, about these. And now you can use that these are generic, a generic sentence. It's a sentence that works for the generic parameters. So it will, it will be a sentence that holds for almost all alpha nodes. Right? So quickly, and then I'll, I'll end here. And so choose W in two, six, right? And sort of, there's more arguments, but I've run out of time. If you choose W in two Z, it will say every solution of the equation with parameter, the first one in two Z and the others are still independent. Uh, you will have things that are algebraic over, but then go back, go down to your Riccardi uh, variety that exists there, and so you will be able to get rid of, uh, you get a contradiction. And, and there's m perhaps more, to, to, to witness that there's more, because I know some of you might be thinking of the details. You, you, you sort of, you really want to code inter-algebraicity and go down, then you witness inter-algebraicity, and it forces, uh, that's where you get the connection. So I think I'm, I'm going to start. Yeah. Any questions? Can you say just a little bit more about that last step? Yes. So, uh, so uh, for example, once you once you get that uh, for all v 
So once you get that, the sentence is true of alpha v w into z, right? So what you'll have is you'll have a, every solution is in, is interalgebraic with uh, a solution in the. Oh, so there's two solutions that are interalgebraic. Now remember that in two z there's an order one definable set. So for any solution of the order one definable set, there will be one solution, not necessarily in the order one definable set, because there's going to be one in uh, S of, right? But then you use interalgebraicity and a transcendence degree argument to show that, well, you have the witness, to the witness if, you, if you have something in the first order equation that's algebraic, that thing that witness algebraic has to be from the first order uh, equation as well. So that's the sort of technical details that you have to get rid of. But then you get you will contradict the fact that uh, that, that can't happen of the order one. Right. Any other questions? Other than the small uh, minimality, uh, or strong minimality, uh, what what result in model theory is used in the proof? Um, so, for example, I mean, one could argue that this is mole theory being used uh, because we, we use, we use, we're coding everything in, in uh, first order formulas. That's one example. Uh, geometric triviality is, that's probably where the heaviest machinery comes. Because I've also hidden that, for example, how can I. Uh, Instead of proving over C of T, I'm proving over just the, the, the parameters where it happens, mm -hmm. right? So even there, there's something about geometric triviality and the constants that's being used. Uh, yeah. And do, do you prove the geometric tri triviality for Ben Levy 6? Do you prove it directly or do you involve Zilber trichotomy? You do involve Zilber trichotomy, yeah. But th this so, sort of method about generic parameters, now you're going to compare it with uh, Malian kernels on an elliptic curve. And you're gonna get yeah, yeah, yeah. some sort. Of it's in the process of uh, uh, finish. I'm finishing the write-up uh, now, and indeed, uh, I'm not treating P3 separately because now I can just incorporate both of them. Right, that's yeah. true. Well, thank you. Thank the speaker, okay? Thank you.